Yeah, it was nice to have uh, one of your questions regarding ethics and privacy because my presentation was quite connected to that point. So, as, uh, as they were saying, I'm, uh, I, I come from the University of, uh, in Switzerland, of the Gold Polytechnic at the Lausanne, but uh, my previous work was related to and um, coordinated with the University of Valladolid. So, this is some stuff that we were doing together and that I would like to share with you. So, what we were doing here was trying to deal with the problems that normally we, we are somehow avoiding a bit uh, regarding ethics and privacy, because many times we have a lot of data, and it's so delicious. But uh, we can play with the, the information that we have, and it's like, okay, I have it, so why don't you use it? So, and um, we have this uh, kind of situation where, okay, we have data, and learning analytics, everything is really promising, but, Obviously, there is always a dark side that depending on how we are using information, things can turn to be nice or not. So I think that for all of us it's quite obvious that we cannot put in front of everyone what's our private address from our home because we, we think that this part of our life is kind of private and we need to preserve it. But we are not so cautious with other data as uh, what we are sharing in the internet. So we have kind of information we are putting in social media, or um, even we are we think that many many tools are free, but, but we are providing our data. So somehow we are paying in another kind of currency. Okay. So what we were reflecting in this work is like okay, in really learning a little, there are different stakeholders. We have students, teachers, we have developers, researchers, <coughs> the government is also involved, and even the institutions they have a role in this uh, in this scenario. So. In order to put a little bit of order in all this schema, there were a few frameworks that were trying to give a set of guidelines. So part of these frameworks uh, were addressing, for instance, institutions. So trying to define what is the responsibility that each one of the, of the users should have. And especially defines, okay, what the institution should do, what, they, uh, what is the role of the teacher you know, in this aspect. Uh, this but it's something that is much more like, predefined. What are the guidelines from the institution? In the same way that uh, sometimes you define whether mobiles could be used or not. So it's a kind of, what is the main thing that we should take into account? What are the legal issues that should be um, respected? So for instance, in this case, uh, in the case of the Code of Practice for Learning Analytics, uh, Stutter, um, maybe they were defining like, apart from responsibility, there are a few things like transparency and consent, like, okay, it's necessary to ask people. Uh, whether they allow us to use the data, and what are we going to do with such data? Also in terms of privacy, with whom we are going to share the information, is the information that we are getting good enough in order to provide a result that is valid? Because sometimes we are missing a lot of information about educational context. We, we know that we can have data from the technological support, but part of the, of the study is happening in a face-to-face -face scenario, so it's not the whole thing what we know. And uh, also what about access? Because many times it's like, okay, that's cool that we have the data, because, but sometimes those that own the data that are the students or even the teachers, because they are also introducing a lot of actions in all these uh, technologies, they cannot see what is happening. So it's like, okay, the data is something that the developers and the researchers, they have for their own. And those that who should be able to trust it, they don't, they don't have any, any power for that. And uh, apart from this, it's like, okay, what kind of actions to be triggered because of learning analytics. We should try to push into a positive result, but we should take into account that sometimes if we say to students, they are going to fail because uh, their attendance is quite bad, you know? So sometimes this kind of, of, of information could go into a bad way, of, uh, into a bad result. And uh, another schema that was proposed was the delicate checklist. It was uh, presented at the live conference and uh, it's also devoted uh, to institutions and policy makers and decision makers. It's also a general schema, what kind of information, what kind of things you need to take into account if you want to introduce learning analytics in an educational scenario. What I would like to present here is like, okay, what, what about teachers? Because if you're a teacher and you want to put le a learning analytics solution in your classroom, what you need to take into account because you're a little bit alone. And, uh, Okay, what you are doing is okay or not? Are you within the legal constraint or you are passing the border and uh, maybe a par uh, some parents would come to your place and say, 
what you are doing, I don't like it, so go out. So this kind of situation is something that we wouldn't like to experience. So what we were trying to understand here in the, in the work done with uh, Alejandra and Sara, my colleagues from Valladolid, was, okay, let's go to a, to a few scenarios and let's see what is happening and what we need to take into account and what we learn. So what we were doing here was, okay, the kind of learning analytics, uh, don't check too much into the, to the drawing because it's not going to give you a lot of information for the general schema. So the idea is that, okay, the learning analytics solution was led by the, um, by the teacher. So the teacher was trying to compare whether the schema that he had in mind for the learning scenario matches or not with the real facts. Okay, so just a comparison of whether things are going bad or well uh, regarding their the pedagogical decisions. So we had a couple of students uh, of studies in the higher education and another one in primary education because each one of the contexts had different constraints. So what we learned from this it was like okay, so depending on the learning analytics approach, there may be different things to be considered. So in our case, we were focusing on the teachers, not so much in the institutional uh, level or even in the educational part regarding the students. So if you are focusing on teachers, there are some things that need to be um, set for this kind of users. So the teacher in this case would have a, a quite clear role leading the, the educational scenario and the, orchest the orchestration of, of such settings. So if you are thinking about the general thing of the classroom, you also need to take into account what is happening regarding the data that you are going to use. And also, there are some uh, some decisions that should be done from the teacher point of view. Okay, I have data, so I need to decide what I'm going to do with this data. So it's your responsibility to think and to decide and to share with your students what what is the, the impact of learning analytics. Another point was regarding the technological solution itself. So um, if we want to take learning analytics into account, many times we need to, ch to, to sit down with the teachers and check what we can do or not, because depending on the scenario, you are allowed to take data or not. If you are working with minors, it's a mess, basically. In Spain, somehow, we are avoiding some situations that if you go to another country as Norway, it's totally impossible to go to a platform and suddenly say, okay, this data, see you, thank you so much, we will use it in our papers and, and so forth. So, we need to take into account somehow, okay, this is a, 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 when we are developing some, some tools, what kind of information we are retrieving, what are we going to do with this information, and who is going to have access to this data. So there is a role from the part of the developers and the researchers that they, we need to put in front of the users this kind of constraints and conditions of use, okay? And also, regarding the stakeholders, I was saying, as I was saying before, in our case, the teachers had the main role. So the teacher is the one that needs to define what is going to happen, what is the data that they retrieve, why, and how I'm going to use it. And um, regarding the, the implications, so as I was mentioning, the educational context may uh, restrict in which way we can use or not uh, learning analytics. So if we're working with primary students, the kind of data that you can get is minimal because they cannot type many times. They, they don't know how to write, so we cannot infer that we are going to do web semantics or something like this. So the degree and the kind of information that we can extract is it changes a lot. So if we, if we go to primary schools, we can do <coughs> kind of this. And what we can do at the higher level is much more complicated. And we need also to deal with the part of the legal aspects. So we need to ask for consent, especially to the parents in that case. They need, they need to agree. And obviously, what, what happens if you ask someone whether they agree or not about uh, taking the data, you may take uh, no as an answer. So we need to provide settings where, okay, even if this student is not allowing us to to gather data, the result that we can uh, we should provide makes we have some sense. And what is the other point, especially regarding the tools that we are using? Many of us, we are using Google Docs and Google Solutions in order to, to support the learning the scenario and many other uh, tools that are available in the cloud. But what happens with the data that we, that we are exposing there? 
if you work with minors, initially you are not allowed because for because of legal restrictions, you cannot expose their identities in the in the web. So, for instance, if you go to France, you cannot use by default its own universities Google solutions. So, there are some things that are a little bit out of the scope in this in the way that we try to approach the students and what we are supporting. So, what we tried to do at the end was try to identify a set of topics that were the key ones regarding teachers. So, if you want to put in practice learning analytics, you need to deal first of all with consent. So you need to ask your students whether they allow you to use the data, and you need to tell them, this is the point of transparency, what are you going to do with it? Indeed, you need to explain them how the data is processed, because maybe there may be gaps in the data that you are collecting. So it's not the same like, okay, you, we can infer that, okay, this student was isolated, uh, the student was not participating in the scenario, but maybe then you realize, asking to the student, that they were just working in pairs, and one was logging the system, working and, the tr and providing some information, and the other just was just sitting next to him. So this kind of information, we need to allow the students to fix the data and to, to enrich the information that is available. It's also a restriction that we need to provide access to them. So, so the point is that both teachers and the students should be able to access to their own data, and if they are minors, also the parents. So in terms of responsibility, in the same way that in a, in a classroom, the teachers are taking care of the exams and the reports that are the, provided by the students, and many times they also know what are the, the phone numbers of the families in order to contact them. The same happens with learning analytics. So if you have data about your students, you need to take care of it. So the same policies that apply in the, in the institution about how to deal with the, with the exams, whether you need to keep them or not, whether you need to, to throw them away, you need to apply them also for this kind of situations. And in terms of privacy, it's the same. So if you have data from your students, you need to preserve and you, need, you should know with whom you can share this information. So. I think that there are many, uh, many points that we already have in mind about other topics and we only need to extend them to the point of learning analytics. This is just another resource that we have available. For the validity, as I was mentioning before, we may need to have additional information in order to complete the part that we are receiving from the technological support. And, uh, and we should take into account that we only need to take the data that is necessary. Many times, especially as developers, we are trained to, to, to everything I can track. I, I, I try to do it. But in terms of learning analytics, for a matter of privacy and, uh, and also um, the, the expectations that we have, we only should take all those data that are necessary for the specific purpose that we have. Okay? And uh, as the example that I was giving before, we need to intervene when something is not working. So if you know that the, uh, one student may drop out and may fail, we need to <coughs> intervene. Because since you have the information, you are conditioning the, uh, the evolution of these students. So in the same way that we may have uh, a test at the middle of the, of the course trying to check how the students are going, and, and we are giving them feedback, the same happens with it. So if you have any clue about what should be done, you need to talk to them. So. In a summary, so this uh, work was trying to focus on teachers. We were doing a couple, uh, three scenarios uh, dealing with higher and primary education. We, we obtained some lessons learned and uh, some guidelines for teachers. What we need to do is to put this, uh, this framework, this kind of recommendations under the evaluation of teachers because there are many things that may constitute a real challenge. I cannot tell my students what learning analytics is doing if I don't know what the hell it is doing. So if the, student, the developers of the research, they don't tell me what is the data that is being retrieved, I cannot tell this information. I cannot share it with my own students. And uh, obviously, we, in this case, we are focusing on teachers, but in the educational context, there are other stakeholders that we were dealing with, and we were talking before about institutions and about uh, policy makers. But also, there is a clear role that we need to put together in order to, to achieve a common ground and to support each other with students, because they, we need to tell them what kind of information, how they should deal with uh, the, the data that they are sharing, the developers, and also the, in a general term, so 
that's all. So you have any questions? students um, and there was there was a big clash actually over whether um, students should be able to opt out or not and students thought they should be able to opt out and the university thought they shouldn't be able to opt out and in the end because the university had a policy the university said no you can't opt out uh, we'll tell you what we're going to do with your data uh, but you can't opt out 